It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, da, da, da. Well, we're It would actually be one, two, three. It just feels good. So he's going one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. <coughs> okay. So it's just easier to think in dotted order numbers. Because I would, I would lose track if I was going. So on that born is when we re reprise that born and cry, is it just should we just do it in Jordan? Yeah. 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 We don't do that, do we? Well he said, you know, that he was he was going to go to the I gotta I gotta hit the bathroom. Hit the what?
Good morning. We have a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, the first one is next Sunday, January 15th, uh, there will be a fellowship time after uh, worship. That'll include, it's our movie Sunday. And the movie we will see is Places in the Heart, a touching story of a young mother struggling to keep a farm financially stable following the accidental death of her husband. Starring in the film is Sally Field as a widow and Danny Glover as a hired helper. Refreshments will be served. We invite you all to relax and join us to watch another excellent movie next Sunday. Also, after the service today, we will have a presentation uh, by NAMI, and that will be here, but you will have time to go get your coffee and then come back, and it'll be set up in here. So, I think that's all the announcements. I do have one more. Um, last Christmas, I prayed for my daughter because she had just been diagnosed with cancer. And this Christmas, I was able to thank God because she is cured. And a lot of that is because of this congregation and the congregation she belongs to. So thank you so much for that. Welcome. May you find God's love, peace, grace, and joy as we worship together today. This morning, the church around the world, in many places, celebrates the baptism of the Lord on this Sunday where uh, Jesus went to the River Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. So please join me in the call to worship. In baptism, God claims us and names us beloved. In baptism, Christ joins us to himself and to one another. In baptism, the Spirit is poured out upon us. Remember your baptism and be thankful.
Please be seated. Please join me in the call to confession in the bulletin. John had a memory of a story, a promise made good. The God of his ancestors had loved a people from oppression to liberation, from death to life, from dead end to promised land. John had come to the River Jordan, the threshold of the fulfillment of that promise, to remind people again of God's presence and to call them again to commit themselves to work out God's purpose in their lives. Here in this place of table, font, and pulpit, we are at the threshold of seeing God's promises made real among us, knowing God is here, calling us from death to life, dead end to promised land. Let us speak aloud all that holds us back from keeping faithful to God's news. God of profound promises, we have found it hard to trust your word. We cannot believe that we are beloved. We have cowered in the face of the future you call us into. We have forgotten the gift of your creation. Our imagination has failed to see the promised land even before us. Draw us again into the waters of your grace and goodness. Descend into the depths of our hearts. Drive away our fear and forgetfulness. Fill us with visions of the vocation you have for all your children. Help us to hear you call our name. Call us beloved and call us to follow. We ask this in your name. Amen. Friends, I have nothing but good news. Since the very first day, God has taken the pieces of our hearts that we have offered up and said, I can work with that. Even in our failings, God has washed us with words of grace, belonging, and love. No matter how many times you have come to the threshold and turned back, you belong to God. God loves you. God forgives you. God claims you. End of story. Thanks be to God. Amen. Since God has made us the blessed community, the church, let us greet one another in whatever way we can with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you. With you.
That was a bit of a challenge. That was good. Please hear the power, a prayer, I'm sorry, maybe the power too, of illumination. God of the descending dove, the thundering voice of love, the waters of rebirth, the burning bush, daily bread, abundant life, speak to us again of your love. Open our ears and our hearts to your promises. Allow your spirit to wash over us, revealing your presence and reviving us to renewed commitment to your plans for your creation. If you care to follow along, I will be reading Deuteronomy 27, 1 to 4, and uh, 28, 1 through 6, in your Pew Bible on page 181. Then Moses and the elders of Israel charged all the people as follows. Keep the entire commandment that I am commanding you every day. On the day you cross over the Jordan into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall set up large stones and cover them with plaster. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you have crossed over to enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. So when you have crossed over the Jordan, you shall set up these stones about which I am commanding you today on Mount Ebal, and you shall cover them with plaster. And then on to 28. <clears throat> if you will only obey the Lord your God by diligently observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed, be you, blessed shall you be in the, in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock. Blessed shall your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. This ends the reading of the Old Testament. The New Testament reading comes from Matthew chapter 3. As I've already given away, the story of uh, Jesus coming to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he had come up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. May the Lord grant us hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This morning we begin a series of sermons that will take us from Baptism of the Lord Sunday to Transfiguration Sunday, which is everybody's high holy day. They love that Transfiguration one. No. Um, but it comes right before Lent starts. And throughout this series, we are going to be looking at the way that God, through Jesus, is trying to shape a community among God's people. Thinking about what it means for us as this small community of faith here in this place, and what it means as people of God who follow Jesus for how we go about creating community in the world around us. And in this story, we hear as the heavens are opened up, 
and Jesus is claimed as beloved son, that there is something about the person, the way of life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that we need to pay attention to as we try to figure out who and what God is calling us to be. And so as we move through this time of this series and into Lent, we'll be focusing on who Jesus is and what Jesus calls us to. And why God identifies Jesus as beloved. But from generation to generation throughout the church, we have also recognized that in Jesus' baptism, in the sky being opened and Jesus calling beloved, that when we come to baptism, when the water is sprinkled over us or thrown at us or, you know, we're dunked into it, however you get, uh, however it gets done, and in the words proclaimed that we each are also claimed as beloved children of God here at this font. In the story, many people have wondered why Jesus needed to be baptized. Because we have thought of baptism as some kind of washing away of our sin. So we've always wondered why Jesus would need to go and be baptized. And part of our wondering and confusion comes from our different understanding of the word righteousness that has been passed down to us from an other than Hebrew source. <laughs> we think of righteousness as some kind of character or some kind of new state of being that we can possess, that we go from being something that's unrighteous and then all of a sudden we become righteous. And it's a trait that we hold on to forever from there. In the Hebrew tradition, righteousness was about relationship. Righteousness was about, for the Hebrew people, your relationship with God and God's relationship with you. So both God and the people can be spoken about as righteous or just. In the relationship, God is righteous, God is just, when God moves and acts to fulfill the promises that God has made to the people. When God says, I will deliver you, and God delivers, God is being righteous, God is being just. God is being faithful to what God said God would do. <laughs> that is God's righteousness. From our side, we are righteous when we fulfill and are faithful to what God has called us as a people to be and to do in the world. In the Old Testament, you hear this mostly talked about when, when they talk about the kings how the king should act, what the king should do. And it says, the king will be righteous if, and lays out what the king should do. And by extension, what all the people should do. Now we get, especially in the Reformed and Protestant tradition, anxious about this talk because we feel like it's some kind of works righteousness. Has anybody ever heard that phrase before? Maybe way back in your confirmation days or something. But what we miss is that for the Hebrews and for us, the acknowledgement was always that God was already there. God was already acting. God was already loving. God was already saving before we ever did a single thing. 
our response, our righteousness, our just response, comes after God has already acted. In fact, God is the creator of all. We wouldn't even exist without, without God. So we know that God has already moved and acted. Even in this story, the way that it's told, Jesus comes and is called beloved before ever doing any ministry at all, before ever speaking a word. Jesus comes and is claimed as beloved. Many of us came to this font as mere babies <laughs> before doing anything in our lives besides crying and eating <laughs> and sleeping. But God claims us as beloved. And even someone like me who was baptized at, I feel like it was later, but my mom says it was 11 so I'll just go along with what she says. She probably knows better than me um, and was dunked in the water and came out. I went there in recognition of what I felt God was claiming about my life and what God was calling me to, not because of anything that I did or I believed. I went there in recognition of what God was doing in my life already. So as we begin to think about how we become the community that God is calling us to be, there's two sides to it. One is that each of us must begin knowing that we are beloved by God. And I know that for us, especially if you're like me, at the beginning of the year, you've just spent a whole week thinking about all the things you didn't do last year <laughs> that you meant to do, and you've been kicking yourself probably all week long about how you've fallen short. So it's important for us, as we begin another year, to remind ourselves Whatever you did, whatever you didn't do, before you do another thing from this moment forward, you are the beloved of God. From the very beginning, words that God spoke over the creation, you've been called forth to be God's people, loved and cherished. That's the baseline for how we begin to be in community together. Because it reminds us in each situation that no matter what people say or what people do, we are beloved. It also reminds us when we interact with people in this place and people in our community that each one of those people is beloved by God, even if we can't muster up <laughs> the, the, the loving feelings all the time. And the second thing is, is that we have to pay attention as we gather in this place, as we read the scriptures ourselves, as we think and reflect on the life and death and resurrection of Jesus then and present in our lives now. How are we being called to be righteous? How are we being called to be just in the world? How are we being called to be faithful to all the things that God wants to draw out of us as individuals, and as a community. And how can we help each other to be and to do what God is calling us to be and to do? Because it's impossible on our own. 
And we always need reminding of how we are beloved. And even more, we need reminded of the people around us that they are beloved as well. When times get tough. So I invite you as we continue through this series, continue to reflect on where God is calling us. How we have entered into this relationship with God. Knowing that God will always be just. God will always be faithful. God will always be loving. And how do we respond? A little bit later in the service, we are going to reaffirm our baptism. And we are fortunate today because mixed in with the water at the font, and there's some more water at the back there, is water from the, the Jordan River, the River of Jordan, that uh, Lissy Blanford brought back and gave to me when she visited over there. So each of us comes today to the Jordan River. Each of us today comes to see the heavens open and to hear the word of God calling us beloved. Each of us comes to the threshold of the River Jordan, looking out to where God is calling us to, looking out to the promised land before us of our beloved community together here in this place, in this community, and in the world to renew our commitment to our relationship with God and with each other. More about that later. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we simply ask that you would break open the things in us that keep us from knowing how deeply we are loved by you and by the people around us. And that you would also clear away all that keeps us from seeing the community you are trying to create here in this place, here in the city blocks around us, here in this community, in this nation, and in this world. Grant us a vision of who you would have us be. Grant us the conviction and courage to live into it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith using the affirmation of faith in the bulletin. We believe that the Spirit still descends. God still speaks and abides with us. The waters of baptism still seal us as beloved, and Jesus still calls us to dive deeper into the waters of faith. We believe in the promises of God and the Spirit's guidance into God's purposes. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, Empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Just a uh, quick reminder, there are um, the friendship pads along the aisles. If you would give us a record of your presence here, that would be wonderful. If you're visiting with us, if you would give us a mailing address or email address, we'd love to thank you for worshiping with us. We do appreciate it. This is our opportunity in thanksgiving for all that God has blessed us with, all that God has done in our lives to return a portion with our morning offering.
protects and safely keeps. Your faithful keeper is the Lord, your shelter and your shade. Neath sun or moon by day or night, you shall Loving God, again, we thank you for all the ways that you move and work in our lives, for all the things that you are calling us to be and do. We ask that with these offerings and with the offering of our whole selves, our whole lives, that you continue to use all of us and everything we have for your glory. We praise this in we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just want to, uh, before we pray, draw your attention to a couple things in the prayer section. Um, some of you may um, still know or remember um, Ruth uh, Gastro, her, her daughter, um, Jordana, who was, um, I think, 50 or 51, passed away suddenly this last week. And so um, I know she hasn't been here. Ruth hasn't been here in a while, but um, just keep her family in your prayers. Um, also, uh, Ken uh, Schott is not with us uh, today because one of his best friends from uh, back in Ohio passed um, rather suddenly as well over, um, over the last week. And so he is back there. So keep... Um, I'm trying to, the name was the most common name you can think of, but um, that because of that, I've forgotten exactly what it was. But the, his first name was Bob, so uh, keep, keep that family in your prayers. Oh, it's right there. It doesn't say the name, though, but it's in there. All right. Um, please join me in prayer. Loving God, we will never tire of being reminded of the depth and breadth of your love for us. We need reminding because the voices around us and the voices in our heads and in our hearts Too often deny that we are loved. Sometimes we can't even imagine that we could be loved. So begin again to 
move and work in each of our lives. To remind us that we begin each day, draw each breath, grounded in your love for us and in your love for all of your creation. We know that there are people in our lives that are struggling in mind, body, or spirit. There are relationships that are frayed and broken. People anxious about work, rent, mortgages. There are so many things that we can't control that seem completely out of our hands. So many places in our lives and in our world that are so clearly broken. So much that has gone wrong, so much that has been distorted and disrupted from the path that you would seek for your world. So in all of those lives, all of the places of brokenness and hurt and harm in our lives and in our world, we ask for you to remind each and every person of your presence. The depth of your love and care. We ask that you move to bring healing and wholeness and liberation. Abundance and sharing in all the places it is needed. But we do not stop at the threshold of calling for your action in this world. We ask for you to move and work through us, to be your hands and feet, to be your voice of comfort, to be your call to justice. Give us the courage. Give us the compassion. Give us the imagination to be the people you are calling us to be. Remind us again of whose we are, how much we are loved. Hear us we say together the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
can be seated for a moment. I think it's a little, little bit different. Also, I know what I said before about what we could play as people were leaving, but I think maybe the glory to God thing might be better than the, the other one. You know? It gives you some traveling time, Alejandro, to get over to the piano. <laughs> we read in the Gospels, this thing is killing me today for some reason. Sorry. We read in the Gospels that baptized by John, Jesus witnessed that all people should turn and accept the God who had already accepted them. We here today, now the body of Christ, do proclaim that same witness. The God who has claimed every person as a beloved child will today speak for you as a beloved son or daughter. We thank you, God, for the gift of water that brings life and health. In the ancient waters, your faithful servant Noah turned from death to life when he turned toward you. Your child Israel found you close at hand when it passed from death to life amidst the raging waters. In the river Jordan, Jesus received John's baptism and witnessed that we too should turn toward you. Proclaiming now your same boundless love, we ask that you bless us as we, bab as, we, as we remember our baptism with this water, that we might be your servants to the world, strong in trust and courageous in loyalty to you. Amen. At baptism, we know that we are claimed as beloved. We know that God loves us, and we recommit to God's love and showing God's love in the world. We ask and answer these questions. Do you and will you turn from the dominion of death in which your choices entangle, confuse, and break you? Do you? We do. Yes. Or maybe. I mean, you know, you can if you want to. And do you turn to God, whose eternal love we embody today as it was embodied by Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you? We do. As we finish the service today, as they play, as you leave, I would invite each of you just to dip your hands in the water. If you come from a Catholic background, you can do the whole cross if you want to. If you, you know, if you don't, you can just uh, put some on your head or wherever you want it. And just remember your baptism. Remember that you are claimed and loved. There's water here at the front and there's water at the back if you leave out that way. Um, so remember your baptism and be thankful. Glory 
That's the idea. 